What's going on everybody? It is December 21st, four days until Christmas. Uh, we've got a five game slate tonight. Not the most interesting of games from a fantasy perspective, but you know, Nick Celtics is fun on the surface and I don't know, Sixers Raptors would have been good if Embiid were playing. Not that he's officially out, but whew. Uh, not going to be a lot of ownership in that Jazz Spurs 10:30 tilt, I would imagine. Um, yeah, let's just get into it. Uh, first game up, Cavs and Bulls. Um, Cavs with the highest implied total, and really, it's a tail. Three of these five lines are made up, but not that that matters. Um, Cavs, Raptors, and Sixers, in my opinion, are going to have the highest totals, and then everybody else is sort of just jumbled in the exact same, you know, 100-point-ish group. Uh, so those are probably the teams that I really want to look at. Um, but for the Cavs, shouldn't be terribly shocking. LeBron's the priority, and then we want to look at Kevin Love. Um, and I think Love looks... You know, really good tonight. Um, obviously, I think Braun looks incredible. He's going to be very difficult to fade. And... I'm very comfortable with J.R. Smith. Jeff Green's been getting some extra run, which is interesting. He's 4,600 on FanDuel and 4,300 on DK. I mean, he's put up 20 plus in a bunch of them, you know, 30. I think in a GPP, you take a look at him. Um, the, been a much better fantasy player than someone like Jake Crowder. I don't necessarily see this as the Dwayne Wade game unless you know you're into like him going back to Chicago, but doesn't really fit his profile either. <clears throat> I can see him going off, but that's just you know Dwayne Wade for you. But now I'd, you know LeBron will be the focus as he should be. Check out the Bulls now. Uh, Bulls 100.75 implied total, which would be eighth on the night. What am I doing? Hope you had a piece of uh, Kuzman Harden last night. Um, anybody can explain to me why Julius Randle played eight minutes, I'd love to hear it because that's one of the more baffling things I've ever seen. Okay. Let's look at Justin Holiday. We'll look at Miritich. I'll continue to look at David Nwaba. Might be the only person actually doing that. Chris Dunn, 7,500 between the two sites. He's been, he's just been really good. Um, I'm perfectly okay with Dunn tonight. Yeah, he's just been really solid. Um, take that filter off. Where's Dunn at? It should be relatively high, yeah. Yeah, so it's only my projection system that really hates him. But per minute, he's been pretty good. Cruncher loves him. It's not like there's a lot of uh, defense going on on the other side of the ball. Or on, from the Cavs. It's not like Calderon's going to lock him down. Now, Justin Holiday, 4900 on FanDuel. A little bit more expensive, 5600 on DK. He needs 25 for value on FanDuel. He's been there in, you know, two of the last three. Has the ability to go off. Um, I'm a little nervous about him on DK, but the shooting guard small forward eligibility helps. 
And then Miritich, 7,200 on FanDuel, 6,700 on DK. So he needs like 35. He has been 30 or higher in his last five. So I'm, I'm fine with him. I think that's probably it from that game. Nawab, 4,800 and 4,200 on DK. Not the best game. Short on minutes last night, which I'm a little concerned about, so I'm going to skip him for tonight. But if he's getting like 26 minutes, he's usually in a pretty good spot. I guess I should look at Markin in too. He's 5,600 on FanDuel, 5,000 on DK. Um, I just... I don't think that he has the minutes to support his salary right now. It needs to come down a couple hundred more dollars. Let's go to the Sixers now. The assumption is Embiid is out. I haven't seen that officially, but by all accounts, he is not playing. Generally leads me to not like Ben Simmons. Ben Simmons is so dependent on like space on the floor and having talent around him because he's not necessarily a scorer. I mean, he's in, he's incredible, you know, going to the basket and you know his floater game is great, but he's not spacing the floor. He's not shooting at all, so it's always going to be in his benefit to have better players around him because that'll allow him to create more. This is one of the made-up lines. Um, I have the Raptors favored by two and a half in Philly. Maybe this is a Ben Simmons game. They do let you get to the rack. That's like the only thing that he does. 50% of Ben Simmons shots come at the rim. 42% of them come in short mid-range. So 92% of his shots come from like basically the restricted area <laughs> let's look at his shot chart it's gonna be yeah look at that all of his shots come from the paint so i think that would look amazing like he would be an amazing play tonight if Embiid were playing and now it's just like slightly okay but i do like it um i'll have I will primarily be, as best I could tell, I'll primarily be on LeBron, and then my non-LeBron lineups will definitely have Simmons. Not that, again, not that I'm reinventing the wheel here. Um, we also want to take a look at, this doesn't feel like the best Redick game, especially with him dinged up. Sarich. Sixty four hundred on FanDuel, sixty four hundred on DK. Yeah, um that's fine with me. Dario Sarok, I can't type. It's awful sometimes. I think that's probably it. I don't I'm not interested in Covington tonight. Um and then with Booker healthy, I don't really want any of the Holmes, Booker, Amir, Quagmire. So I think that's probably it for Philly. We'll move to Toronto. Time to find out if this is a DeMar game or a Kyle game. Uh, I can almost guarantee this is a DeMar game. Yeah, this is a big time DeMar DeRozan game. In fact, I might <clears throat> I might like DeRozan more than I like anybody else on this slate. He's 8800 on FanDuel, 8800 on DK. 
So we need him to get to basically 45. Um, he's only done that once in the past seven, but he's had three 40-point games in that time, which would be right at value. Um, but I love it, especially without Embiid. You know, DeRozan gets to, uh, you know, the short mid-range shots 34% of the time. You know, lives in the mid-range, so to speak. Without Embiid there, I think that's helpful. Um, but I like that a lot. I, I think that I'm going to have a very healthy amount of DeRozan. And Lowry looks fine, too. Um, I don't necessarily have any problem with either or both. I just think that DeMar is probably a slightly better value. Lowry needs, like, 42 or 43. Obviously, he can get there. I, I'll have some of Kyle Lowry, but I'd probably be, like, 2-1 to one DeRozan to Lowry, or maybe even 3-1. to one. see surge needs he's 6400 on FanDuel 5900 on DK 30 he put up 38 last night up coming back after taking a night off he's been playing really well really well um, I'm, I'm very happy with going with surge I think that's a, a good stack and then I don't really need any of uh, well, Valanciunas, 5,400 on DK, 22. Played short minutes last night, 16. Hmm. Yeah, I ha because Embiid is out, I have to look at Jonas. Lots to like in these early games. It, it tapers off after this. Uh, so we'll go Knicks now. I have um, I have Porzingis in. And the assumption would be Celtics favored by a one um, in New York. If Porzingis is out, that line will certainly move. But this is another one of the fake lines. copy so somebody take a drink can't imagine this is going to look terribly good for uh, the Knicks from a fantasy perspective man I'd love to go with Porzingis but how do you trust it you have to have a little bit of him I guess Porzingis, 9,500 on FanDuel, 89 on DK. Look, you can't just ignore him tonight, but I think it's very risky to have a lot of uh, exposure to him if he's on the court. Now, if he's not playing, you, know, you need to look at Beasley at 5,200 on DK. But that's only if Porzingis is out. Um, Cantor. Cantor is 63 on FanDuel, 62 on DK. Hasn't been over 30 in a while. That's not a spot I want to go. Are there any incredible values here? Nothing, nothing jumps off the page. I don't see anything else for the Knicks right now. Mm -mm. That's it. Let's go to Boston now. Like I said, all of these implied totals for some of these games are all in that same sort of area. So the difference between fourth and ninth are three points. 
so I'm not really stressed about that. I think I mentioned this yesterday, and I definitely mentioned it in the live stream, but yesterday's live stream will be the last live stream until, um, until after the holidays. I've got my family coming in today, so not going to be able to be uh, just shooting the shit with everybody at dinner time hours, but, you know, we'll be back soon enough. I just typed the Knicks in again, so there's the, uh, there's the first mistake on cleaning the glass today. Another reason to drink. All right, Celtics. Knicks give up the threes, so we want to look at, I think Horford would be a good look. Kyrie will be a good look. Probably Jalen Brown. <clears throat> All right, Kyrie, 87 on FanDuel, <clears throat> 87 on DK. He's been to 45 twice in his last five, technically three times if we want to, if we want to round up. Um, not a lot of defense in the Knicks game. Kyrie going to MSG. Uh, I'll take it. Um, Jalen, 57 on FanDuel, 58 on, nope, 55 on DK. I'd like to have a piece of that. And then Horford, 76 on FanDuel, 72 on DK. Um, last night was his first down night in a long time. His previous games have all been 30 points and higher. But I think that he could write that ship against the soft defense of Ennis Cantor. Now we'll move to Phoenix. Who the hell knows this damn squad. So first thing I want to point out. Isaiah Cannon is 3,700 on FanDuel. He's 4,800 on DK. I don't recommend playing Isaiah Cannon on DK, but on FanDuel, uh, especially on a night like tonight, you definitely want to fire up at least a little piece of that. 3,700 is a no-brainer if he's getting 20-plus minutes the way that he tries to you know, dominate the ball. Greg Monroe sat the past um, three games, so... It's leading me to believe that since they're talking about signing Cannon, that they're probably going to buy out Greg Monroe in the near future. Um, so I think that that sort of hashes out the Len Chandler rotation a little bit more. This is the other game that had an actual line. Uh, Grizzlies favored by one and a half in Phoenix. If you need to figure out how bad the Suns are. Just know that they're not even favored against the Grizzlies at home. If you need like any sort of perspective, because the Grizzlies are terrible. And somehow the Suns still aren't favored to win. Okay, I want to look at TJ Warren and Bender. And I think that's probably it for me on DK. Getting into this uh, multiple GPP lineups thing, it's been it's been fun. It's a little bit easier from like a mental health perspective. No stress over just one lineup. But I will bounce back and forth between FanDuel and DK. Okay. TJ Warren, 7,800 on FanDuel, 6,100 on DK. Absolutely, positively should be played on, on DraftKings, and a lot, in my opinion. Put up 45 last night, 35 uh, two nights ago. Both of those would be well over value for him on DK. Don't go anywhere near him on FanDuel. It's a terrible price. <clears throat> Bender, 3,400, so he only needs, let's just say 20. Um, he can get there, or he could lay an egg. Uh, I'm going to ignore that now that I see it. 
I don't want any part of Isaiah Cannon on DK. Len is 5,700. <clears throat> One of these days I'll figure out if I could ever clear my throat. It's the coffee. It just doesn't help matters. Too much butter and MCT oil. Man, Alex Len looks pretty good. On DK, 5,700. I'll pass on Chandler. And I think that's probably it from this game for Phoenix. We're going to Memphis now. Like I said, Grizzlies, slight favorites. The Gri <clears throat> Grizzlies are just so bad. Okay, gotta look at Marcus All for sure. And I think I'll take a look at Tyreek as well. So Gasol needs 40 plus. He's been there in his last two. Starting to put it together a little bit. Tyreek, 78 and 76, so let's just say 40. He's hit it once in the last three. Um, not a lot of defense to be had on the Suns, though, so it'd be, I'd be silly to not take a look there. I don't want any part of Parsons. I think Jermichael Green is okay on DK in this particular instance. I think Chalmers looks okay on FanDuel. Um, it's been up in minutes again, and he's back down to almost minimum salary. So I would take a look there. I don't really want anything else. Last game, Jazz hosting the Spurs. No line on this one right now, but it should be the lowest implied total of the night. Um, assuming Donovan Mitchell is back right, right now, if not, uh, probably opens a little bit of Alec Burks up. He's down to 4,000 again, so if there's no Mitchell, um, Burks at 4,000 is a no-brainer. <clears throat> not the same on DK, though. He's uh, 4,700, so it's not as guaranteed. Not to mention they're playing the Spurs, so... Okay, we don't want any part of Joe Ingles. Um, I'd be okay with Donovan Mitchell. I'm okay with Rubio. Jazz coming off a just dreadful like 30-point drubbing by the Thunder last night. I liked Rodney Hood a lot. He was able to score a little bit, but still didn't provide value. Donovan Mitchell needs 35 if he's healthy. I just I don't trust it. Favors needs just shy of 30, which he hasn't done in weeks. Um, I'm not gonna prioritize anything there. I don't think there's anything to like on the Jazz, except for maybe Rubio. Hit a rough one last night, but I think that he can rebound here. Possible Rubio plays... What's Rubio's history against the Spurs? My hypothesis is Rubio will be decent in his history against the Spurs because that brand of basketball is most similar to the brand of basketball he played prior to coming over. And he's just sort of used to it. Sort of. I mean, two 40-point games last year. Granted, he played 40 minutes, and one of them was an OT. OT, and it was 97-90. Boy. Yeah, I'm, I'm comfortable with Rubio. 
Let's just go to the Spurs now and finish this up. But the Jazz are just not not very good right now. Um, do I want to look at Rodney Hood, who needs 28 um, bull sites? If Rod okay, if Donovan Mitchell is out, I think that Rodney Hood and Alec Burks both look okay. Otherwise, I don't, I don't really want it. It's a good game to avoid. Now we got the Spurs here. What the hell did I just do? Okay. Somehow I underlined that. I don't, I don't know how I did that. Uh, I, I believe everybody is set to play tonight for the Spurs. Um, Danny Green would be the only question mark. I have him in right now, but um, he did get a little dinged up yesterday. I think we want to very much prioritize LaMarcus Aldridge. I think maybe having a little bit of pow wouldn't hurt. With no go bear, um, it's a much easier game for Pow. He had 49.9 fantasy points last night in 33 minutes. Pow is 5,300 on DK. I'm less interested now. Aldridge needs 38. Almost hit it last night. He's had some 38 and 40 point games, um, but not having Gobert really makes a difference for Aldridge in this case. Can't really trust Anderson or Leonard or Gay or Ginobili um, or any of the guards, so I think that's it for me. And that would be the end of the shortlist. Relatively tiny shortlist for tonight, but I did hit all the positions, which is always good. Um, let's throw it into FanDuel and see what comes up as the optimal. It's going to spit out Dwayne Wade and a bunch of other people that aren't interesting to start. <laughs> that much I can tell you. Well, I'll be damned. No Dwayne Wade. Interesting. So Optimal comes out as Rubio, Isaiah Cannon, Tyreek, Mitchell, LBJ, McBucket, Saric, Tatum, Gasol. I'm plenty okay with that. I would probably shift this way and go with Rubio, Cannon, Evans, Holiday, Braun, Brown, Saric, Tatum, Gasol. That looks a little bit better to me, but FanDuel lineup pops off the page pretty nice. Let's see what we get for DK. I just wish that would be 5% automatically. You can save your settings, but they don't seem to like load automatically. So what's the point? That's a lot of terrifying red. All right. Optimal to DraftKings. Nawaba, Harrison, LBJ, Miritich, Cantor, Ingles, Favors, Mitchell. Bleh. I will not be anywhere remotely close to that. This one looks a little better. Man, this is going to be an interesting dance tonight. Alrighty, that is it. Um, like I said, no live stream tonight. We will have uh, breakdown strategy videos every morning, so nothing's going to change there. 
Uh, projections will get updated as I can, um, but they'll, they should be out every day. And that's it. Uh, you know, like, subscribe, Patreon, Reddit, Twitter, checking off all the boxes. Best of luck tonight, and uh, I'll talk to you guys again in the morning.